All right, obviously a little bit better day in uh, in Timmins Arena today. I thought um, I thought our aggression was much better, and um, you know I thought that you know first of all we we know the respect that we have for Winthrop, and um, you know it's a four year series, two and two basically every all the teams won the home games, and um, you know it's been a war of a four year series with those guys, and have a lot of respect for their program and what Mark does, and knew that they would be excited and ready to play today, and they were. And, um, you know, I thought both teams came out with a lot of energy. I thought that, you know, we made that run, you know, kind of in the five-minute mark of the first half. And we're enduring a little bit of foul trouble. And we got up 10, and I decided to take Slaw out to save his second. And then, you know, we just we just have a – I pull all the guys out with two with that last defensive possession, and that might have been a mistake. We, we got completely lost on the backside there and uh, gave up that hammer three to, to basically go up two in the locker room. And, uh, but I thought our response in the second half was really good. I thought we had um, 12, I think we had 12 second chance points for the game and they were all in the second half. And, um, you know, first 30 plus deflection game of the year. And uh, so really proud of that. I think anytime you have a loss, uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta look at it, at least my philosophy, everybody's got a different philosophy. I think the easiest thing to do is to figure out what the players do wrong. Uh, I think the, the, the best thing to do is figure out what did I do wrong. And, um, you know, and taking a lot of time on Wednesday just getting away from it and, um, you know, just, just spending some time making sure that, that I was leading correctly. I thought there were two things that I had to do better. And um, one, I think rotationally, I've, I've affected some guys' confidence a little bit of, of trying to find, you know, hey, let's play 10 and let's see who's got the odd hand and let's see what this looks like. Uh, but I've, I've given them no consistency. And, and I think what it's done is it's, you know, guys are going into the game, hey, I better make this shot so I can play longer played this much this game I'm not playing this much and you know I also want all these guys to be happy and and I want them to leave the gym smiling and I don't want them to be disappointed that they didn't get to play um, but at the end of the day I, I had to clean that up and I think that we've got to find some rotational consistency for league play and I think the guys coming off the bench have to know what to expect and then to be honest with you I mean just we know that we've got to get Mike out there as much as possible and Slauson out there as much as possible JP, you know, we're sitting here a month ago. You guys are looking at me kind of like, you know, you know, uh, and now, you, okay, now you see it. He's a, he's a player, right? He's a he is a player, and and so we got to get him out, right? Like, and and so now you got you got to balance this, and um, so we wanted to have a little bit more consistency there. We told the team on Thursday this thing was going to come, practice was going to matter, and and I wanted to make sure there were teeth on that, and I told him I was going to look at all the statistical analysis from the last two days. So when you look at the whole formula from Thursday, Friday practice, Slaw was one, Foster two, Vanderwall three. Okay, so Vanderwall plays, and Vanderwall helps us win today because that's what he does. And um, you know, and, and it's just like I told the staff yesterday when I told him what my plan was. We were talking about it late last night, and I just said, "Look, I know he's not making shots, but we're also not giving him normalized minutes, right? So he, he's not. I mean, how's he going to make shots? You know." Tonight, he got that corner three. What happened? That boy went in there, didn't it? And, um, you know, he played the game the right way. He made huge plays. I mean, made huge plays in the game. And um, we've got to reward that, right? We've got to reward guys that just compete. And we got to reward guys that just respond and just come back. He could have had any response he wanted. This, he was starting, and then he hardly plays versus high point. He could have set a meeting with me Thursday. Didn't. He came in there and practiced his absolute behind off on Thursday. And um, so that I saw, I saw that, you know, where I had to be better there. The second thing was I can't expect our team to play aggressive if I'm not making sure that we're putting out aggressive game plans. And I thought we needed to be a little bit more aggressive defensively. And so um, we've worked on that the last two days. It wasn't perfect, but it fits my personality more. It's what I like to do. And um, you're going to give up some things. It's a, it's a football team that, that blitzes more and they sit in coverage. Uh, coverage isn't working for us. Right, it's not working for us. So I'm tired of seeing the ball go in. Right, I mean we're just giving up shot after shot after shot, and you know we 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 have a zoom with our analytics company on Wednesday and all this stuff, and it's like, and what you see is, I mean it's pretty clear. Like we know this, the the D isn't all bad. Okay, we're top 75 in the country in turning people over, keeping people off the free throw line, and we're top 10 in the country in defensive rebounding. But then you look at three point field goal percentage, two point field goal percentage tough two field goal percentage, right? And we're 315 plus in all three of those areas. So we're not affecting the ball, right? We're not affecting the shooter. And so tonight it was not perfect, right? But I think our closeouts were better. I thought our hand activity was better. 
I thought we I thought we impacted the ball much better. And um, you know, we got driven a few times. There's some definite things we want to clean up, but you know, we got to keep practicing that way. And uh, I was proud. I was proud of those guys. And so, uh, it's like I told them, everything in life is about a response, right? Like it doesn't matter if you're talking about a basketball game. It doesn't matter if you're talking about. It's all about a response. And tonight we saw a bunch of responses, right? We saw the Vanderbilt Vanderbilt response from Harley playing, and then he goes out there and plays like he does today. The Slauson response, eight and three versus High Point. What's going on? That, all that noise, right? Ignore the noise. I'll see you in the gym at 7:45 Thursday morning, right? And we we stand out there and we talk and we shoot. And he's making all these shots. And I said, Why didn't you shoot the ball last? What, what, if you're going to be in here and you're going to work, you got to go out there with confidence. Well, what did he do today? He hit two huge threes. His confidence was different. His response was better, right? Um, you saw you saw Marcus's response, right? I pulled him right at the beginning of the second half. Goes out there, what's he do? He gets seven rebounds in the second half, right? So teaching these guys, it, it's, look, you can't always control what happens to you in life, and um, you know, but you can control your response. And the more we learn that and the more we buy into that, the better this team's going to be. Every bit of it. I mean, the psyche, you, you, you're trying to motivate guys, you try not to damage the psyche, but also, is that something that, I mean, you're still a rel- relatively young coach, is that something that you learn every day? You know, I heard a coach, I'll hold his name, but I heard a coach say it when I was a younger coach, really developing my philosophy. This was probably in 2008, and he was winning, he was competing for national championships in, in another sport. He said, if you want to get into coaching today's age, you need a major in business and get a double major in psychology. And that's what it is. He was right. You know, I mean, he was right. And the best thing about it, though, is you just got to You got to be you got to be consistent to teach your team life lessons through sport. And that's easy to say. It's a lot harder to do in the hardest of moments. Right. And so it's it's a deal where, look, I get to lead a program. I get to be I get to be a bridge from the way the kids come in here in high school and are about to go into the real world. We got to teach them as much as we possibly can, and if we can use a game to do it, that's great. And and that's why you don't, you know, there was no panic, you know, there was no what's going on. It was like, hey, you know, we're gonna sit in the frustration, or we're gonna sit in the fix. One of the two. Okay, I'm gonna sit in the fix, right? We're gonna go out here and we're gonna figure out how to fix this, right? The frustration, like you're not gonna play as well as you need to play if you're frustrated. So we've got to get we've got to get to a point where we understand that. But yeah, I think I think that's um, it's what I told the staff on Thursday morning. We didn't we, we I just I, I got away on Wednesday and and um, I just said, look, it's hard to examine what we're doing until we know how we're doing it and that we're doing it well enough, right? Like it's easy to come in there and say, hey, we need to change this. This isn't working. It's not what you do; it's how you do it, right? It's not what how what what are we doing to guard the ball screen? It's, it hasn't. Until you can say, hey, that's executed at a 10 on 10, and that's the best we can do it, we don't know if it works. And so for this, you look at the tape, and, I mean, it's just, oh, they made all these shots. Well, of course they did. You know, like, it's like you got, you got free shooters out there. And so we, we had to really focus the last couple of days about, you know, hey, it wasn't about all this technique change. We didn't come in there and put in some new defense. Now, we were more aggressive in our ball screen coverage tonight, but it was more so, I mean, we did 28 minutes of closeouts on Thursday. Right, like it's the fundamental of the game, right? Like it's not what you do, it's how you do it. We had to do what we do better, and I thought we did that today. Um, in practice, uh, Thursday and Friday, what what was it that you did that maybe simplified things, like that that they weren't doing, that and that maybe you weren't presenting in the right way? What 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 made the difference? Well, I mean, we just something we say a lot around here: do simple better. And, and that's kind of my personality when you do play a game where you don't feel like you you competed at the level you needed to is, is we got to do the basics better. And, um, you know, I alluded to the closeouts. I alluded to the hand activity. I just didn't think – I just don't think we're affecting the ball. I don't think we're contest- contesting enough passes. I don't think we're closing out well enough. I think guys are getting too many free shots. I don't think we're jumping up there and contesting. Um, and so it was just really about – it was like practice wasn't some complicated script on Thursday. Right? It was, hey, we're going to do this, and until you do it right, we're going to keep doing it. And most of the time, in my experience, that's what it is. It's, 
you know, where, where you don't see as much return is if you go in there in the middle of the season, you try to change a whole bunch of stuff, right? Do it better, do it faster, do it again, do it louder, do it harder, right? Do it faster, do it better, do it again, do it louder, do it harder. And then you get a, you get a group to buy into that, and they start to see the result of it. And, um, you know, I, I thought we would play better today. You know, I thought we would play better today. Uh, we had film in here this morning, you know, before shoot around, and uh, we kind of split that up. You know, 30 and 30. We don't take a whole 30 minutes on the shoot around. We watch film a little bit. And um, we had Slauson and Vanderwall in here watching film before that by themselves, right? And so that when you see things like that, you know your guys are locked in. And, you know, now we got to be able to sustain that. It seems to me from watching Tuesday and watching today, I always say that you can't divorce the tangible from the intangible. But the team on Tuesday seemed to be forever apologetic. They just messed up on defense, frowning, saying this was me, and got a little bit out of sorts, I thought, on offense because they were just, I, I don't know, sometimes you tell yourself you got to play hard and you just don't. Yourself doesn't believe it. But today, everything about this game seems less forced and more spontaneous and cohesive. Yeah, I mean, I, thought, I think that it kind of goes back to what we've been talking about, right? Like. You you want to you want to sit here and talk about the problems, or you want to go and be about the solution? And um, you know, I thought our staff did a good job of just really clarifying: this is what we feel like we need to go do, and this is what we feel like we're going to be at our best. And um, it's got to be built around aggression. And for us to be able to play this way, it's hard. You know, I mean, it's um, defense is hard. Defense has to be connected. And um, we watched. We did a lot of teaching the past couple of days. Um, you know, we we watched. You know, you got different people you pull from. I'm a huge Tony Bennett fan and love what Virginia does. And, you know, we've always based a little bit of our defense around that. And, you know, we broke down the Michigan game the last two days and just showed them, you know, how, just just the attention to detail. And sometimes it really helps those guys to just see other teams doing it and see how hard they're doing it and seeing the multiple efforts and seeing the hand activity. And, um, look, this game, this game has no time for sympathy. Nobody's gonna feel sorry for us. You don't need to say my bad, right? Like, it, like it's what's done is done. Like, you got to go out there and you got to get the next stop. And that frustration starts to settle in. And you're right. Like, how many how many games have you watched? That's what I just told the team about Slauson, right? How many games have you watched where you walked away and you thought, man, he was an elite defender tonight. Man, he struggled on offense, right? Or or man, he really played well offensively. But man, he was a dog defensively. Like, you just don't. The game is played one way. Right, like usually you just so tonight, Slauson was good on which end of the floor, both, right? Did you feel him on defense a little bit more than we have lately? Yes. Well, what happened to his offense? Right, it got better, because there's that aggressive spirit, right? And there's that that, that desire to connect and that desire to go out there and play team ball, and um, this thing's got to be built on that. And um, I think you're right. I think once once my bad, hey, I'm sorry, or man, you know they're hitting all these shots. Once that once all almost basically like excuses settle in then yeah you do get you do deal with some internal frustration um but it goes back to that word response and i thought we did a good job of that we could have done that tonight at halftime you know i mean we we could have we could have felt sorry for ourselves for a little bit at halftime we just had a 10 point lead now it's two um man it just seems like everybody's making shots against us right you, you gotta go out there and fight you know you gotta go out there and fight and um I thought our team was strong and courageous tonight and i think that's when we're at our best and um i thought they definitely showed that it seemed like tonight, every time you got it to 10, Winthrop would get it back down to single digits. And I think it was a six-point game when Mike got his fourth foul, which is just highly unusual for Mike to have any kind of foul trouble. And there's like five minutes left. He comes out, and you on a 9-0 run. Uh, obviously, the team knows that you have all these different parts that can do well. But in a unique situation that you don't usually find yourself in Mike Bothell with four fouls and five minutes to play, how big was it for the team to respond like that with him on the bench, and then you bring him back in to close it out? Well, it, go, it goes back to a guy that we subbed in for him, right, which was who? Vanderwall, right? So you look at Vanderwall, and he was a .88 defensively tonight. Okay, that was the lowest on our team. So that means every time Ben Vanderwall was in the game, they only got .88 points per possession. And we had one, two, three, four. We had five guys under one, but nobody in the point eights, right? Slaw was a, a, a point nine one, which is really good as well. He came in there and he got some stops, that big block down there, right? He got a deflection. 
I mean, this team has depth, right? But we got to find guys that want to play the game the way the game has to be played. And we've got a lot of different talent. It's just got to all connect, right? And and I think we can absorb Mike going out, right? We can absorb Slaw going out. And, and we got to be able to do that, right? We can't – I don't know if I want to place Mike all these minutes in league play. I mean, maybe we have to, you know, but – We've got to get to a point that we can we can trust those guys behind it, and um, and yeah, we did. I mean, really, it was stops and, and transition, which is when this team's at its best. And so, um, you know, again, I know I've talked about him a lot, but for him to play basically half the time and, and to be a point eight eight, I mean, that's for a freshman. That's that's fantastic. Um, coach, do you guys track um, like immersion plays? Uh, a big block by Slaw, something like, for instance, the the dunk on uh, the baseline by Ben Vanderwaal. I, I found that this team seems to respond more when they when they have an emotional play in a game, especially the one by Vanderwaal. It takes some confidence, first of all, to try that. But um, you know, I, to see that that just picks up the whole team the entire way, and then and then Slawson has that uh, dunk in the second half, and. Um, it seems like when those when things are going well, there's more of that aggression. Would that be a, a fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, I think this is this is a game like you gotta you don't you want to play with emotion, you just don't want to be emotional, right? I mean, I think this game this game is best when you play with emotion, and this bet this game is best when there's energy injected into the game, right? And you know, we've always called those three plays, you know, that just the energy. Right, like that comes with that. The emotion that's usually with that, the enthusiasm that the team's playing with, you know, that's something. I mean, for for a while here, we've always kind of charted those. We'll show those in film, right? That like, look what happened after this play, right? And it's kind of it's kind of like the 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 what they call them, you know, in football, just those explosive plays, right? Like those have to be our explosive plays, and and they do they they do change momentums, and and you know the the game is always up with momentum in a game of basketball especially as ga- as fast as the game is being played right now um but man i couldn't believe ben dunked that i mean i i knew he could but the way he did it i just felt like he kept elevating and i was just like I, first when he went to dunk i'm like is he going to get there and then he just kept going up i was like good grief he's about to hit his head on the rim um but he's you know just really as you can tell i'm i'm just super proud of him um, but Slaw's dunk was tremendous. I mean, that was a huge play. Uh, but, but you know, other plays that, that affect that too, I wish we'd had somebody dive on the floor for that loose ball, but fortunately we ended up coming up with it. But just the wall up at the rim and getting our hand on that ball and they don't score it and the ball's in a scrum and then we come up with it. Uh, those, those, things, those things can change momentum as well because usually you're going to put the game in transition. But we had, we had a lot of transition points tonight, uh, which, which we knew was going to be important. And um, yeah, we're always, and you're right. I mean, to be able to do that, you got to go play aggressive. There are times when some of Slauson's most noted plays are plays that he has essentially been beaten and he swoops in from behind. And, and th- but when he is at his best, he never has to make those plays. And I don't recall him having to make one of those tonight. Yeah, those are those are reactive plays, right? right? Typically, and, and look, let's be clear: like great defenses, there's going to be multiple efforts. There's going to be a breakdown. A good defense can absorb one breakdown. An excellent defense can absorb a couple breakdowns, right? Just through multiple efforts. So, you know, I, I still think this team needs a few more verticality plays at the rim. I think this team needs a few more charges. Um, I think there needs to be a, a few. You know, we need to start making a few more plays that are reactive. But you're right. The more you can keep the ball in front and keep the ball in the box, the better your defense is going to be. And um, I definitely thought, you know, we had a couple of those shot clocks. We had a couple, you know, Garrett contested that shot over there. Like, I felt like we got him in the late clock. Uh, and, um, you know, we weren't quite as good. I mean, the other night in the last five seconds of the shot clock, we were 1.5 PPP, which is awful. Mm-hmm. We've got to continue to finish defensive possessions. We were a little bit better tonight at 1.0. Weren't quite where we need to be, but it was better. And um, and I think you know Slaw definitely gives you a chance to be erase some tough plays, but you're right. You don't you want, you want to keep them out of those positions as much as possible. All right. <laughs>